Hello, this is the video to review for world history up until 1500. We're looking at the Virginia Standards of Learning, recording category one, which focuses on human origins and early civilization. The very first category we're going to talk about is human origins, which is looking at standard two. Early humans started in East Africa and started to roam the earth following their food and gathering nuts, berries, and other sorts of food as they moved about 400,000 years ago. They start in East Africa about here and they move into Eurasia and Australia and the Americas via the land bridges that had formed around this time period. Early humans, humans were hunters and gatherers whose survival depended on the availability of wild plants and animals. They had to move around the world following the migrations of animals and also hunting for their berries. They were limited by their environment because of the fact that they had to move. This made them nomadic. There was a split in time between the Paleolithic and the Neolithic era. The ne Paleolithic era is categorized by nomadic people that lived in small clans. They made tools and weapons out of rock. They used fire. Um, they started to create an oral language, and they were known for their written um, languages being cave art. Then the agricultural revolution happens. And that causes the Neolithic era. People start to settle into permanent villages because they are able to domesticate plants and animals, meaning that they started to farm and also started to raise animals just for food. Another characteristic of the Neolithic era was the use of pottery, woven fabrics, and more advanced tools and weapons that used metal like bronze. Archaeologists are known for studying past cultures by looking at human remains, settlements, fossils, and artifacts. From looking at those artifacts, they're able to tell what daily life was like and to be able to understand more about those civilizations. They use tests like carbon dating to figure out how old certain objects are, which helps them to place it in history. A couple of monoliths that you're going to need to know are Stonehenge, Aleppo and Jericho and Catahoyuk. These are different archaeological sites that archaeologists study to know a little bit more about the way that people used to live. Stonehenge is in England and began in the Neolithic era and was finished in the Bronze Age, which was still part of the Neolithic era. Aleppo and Jericho are located in the Fertile Crescent and they're two of the one of the earliest cities that developed in that area. Catahoyuk is an early city in Anatolia that is one of the earliest civilizations as well. These are picture representations of those four different places. Some You'll need to be able to visually um, remember what those places look like. So Stonehenge was a circle of um, stones that was kind of organized together. It was probably used as a calendar or as a religious site for pagans. Aleppo and Jericho were also known as cities. Jericho specifically is known for the defensive walls that were defeated by the Israelites. And Catahoyuk is one of the oldest and best preserved Neolithic settlements that we have. Go ahead and pause your video and take the quiz that is located in the comments. The next topic we're going to cover is the River Valley Civilizations, which is looking at standard three. On this map, you see Egypt, Babel, or Mesopotamia, Indus River Valley, and the China River Valley. So Mesopotamia and Egypt are the first two that we're going to talk about. Mesopotamia it, rivers were Tigris and the Euphrates. It had one of the very first civilizations, very first cities in Sumer. They created a writing system called cuneiform that was used with a wedge to um, create that writing system. They also had large temples called ziggurats. Mesopotamia is also the place where the Babylonian Empire um, developed that was significant about that was the development of Hammurabi's code by Hammurabi. It was one of the very first coded law systems. The Phoenicians and Judaism also developed in Mesopotamia. The Phoenicians um, were around the Mediterranean coast. They were really great sailors. Because they were on the Mediterranean, they created a lot of colonies and also traded a whole lot with people around. That's how they did, um, created the phonetic alphabet, which is what they used in their trading. Um, the Hebrews also were in Mesopotamia along the Mediterranean Ocean in the Jordan River Valley. And this was the place where Judaism, or um, the Jewish faith, first got its roots. It was one of the first monotheistic religions. In Egypt, the Egyptians developed along the Nile River. 
Valley. They were led by pharaohs, who their people thought of as gods. They established that religious authority there. They built very large pyramids that kind of showed their engineering greatness and served as tombs for their pharaohs. They were polytheistic, having hundreds of gods, all the way from the sun god to the god of the underworld, and their writing system was hieroglyphics. Other two river valleys are India and China. India developed along the Indus and the Ganges River. It was separated from the rest of Asia by the Himalayan Mountains. The Aryans migrated through the Khyber Pass through the Himalayan Mountains. The Hindus created also the caste system, which was their social system of um, different social classes. They also had the development of two religions in India, Hinduism and Buddhism, which we'll talk about a little bit later. Um, India is also known for the Gupta Empire, which created algebra, the number system, along with the concept of zero, textiles, navigation. Um, early cities included Mohenjo-Daro and Harappa. They were both well-planned cities using a grid system and plumbing. In China, the Chinese River Valley was along the Huanghe or the Yellow River. One of the most important things about China is the Great Wall of China that was built by Emperor Qi Hong Shui Hongdi of the Qin Dynasty. It was ruled by dynasties, which essentially meant that families passed power down from one person to the other through the Mandate of Heaven, which essentially said that rulers should be just and they were picked by the gods. The Silk Road was a major trade route that ran, ran from Asia all the way to Rome. The two religions in China were Confucianism and Taoism. We'll talk about them a little bit later. And they had the civil service system, which set up a system of um, tests to make sure that people who were in the government were actually worthy of being in the government. They knew what they were talking about. Um, and they also came up with items like um, paper, porcelain, and silk, which helped them to develop a major trading system along the Silk Road. Here's a little visual look at the different writing systems. Up in the top, you have cuneiform. You can kind of see the way that the wedge was created, those letters. You have hieroglyphics, which is like a version of kind of pictograms. Sanskrit was the language in India. Chinese calligraphy, which it ends up looking like this um, in modern day times. Cave art was pictures of um, prehistory. And then you also have the Phoenician alphabet, which goes along with a phonetic alphabet that helped them to keep records of trade. Judaism that developed in Mesopotamia. Okay, the Hebrews developed along the Mediterranean um, Sea with the Jordan River Valley. They can trace their religion all the way back to Abraham, who made a pro the first covenant or a promise with God, who said that he would um, help him develop his people. Moses was one of the pro um, like main people in um, Judaism as well because he was able to lead the Hebrews out of slavery in Egypt. The Hebrews also believe that Jerusalem is their holy city. They're monotheistic, means that they believe in one God. Their holy book is the Torah, which makes up the Old Testament for the most part. They keep their own religious code of laws called the Ten Commandments. And they also had a period of diaspora, meaning that they were essentially spread out. Um, when the Jews were exiled from Israel by the Babylonians, um, they start to spread out far after that. Go ahead and pause your screen to go ahead and take the next quiz. The quiz is located in the comments. The next category we're talking about is other early civilizations that are kind of occurring along the same timeline as the other civilizations we've talked about. Um, in India, India starts to develop out of the Indus River Valley and only gets um, more complicated as it goes. The two main religions that we talked about before were Hinduism and Buddhism. Okay? So in Hinduism, they have a caste system which set up their social structures. Hindus believe that there's many forms of one god. They have hundreds of different gods, some of them relating specific to specific cities and places. The main belief in Hinduism is in reincarnation and that the karma that you have in this life helps you in the next life because you may be reincarnated based on your karma. The books that they um, perceive to be holy are the Vedas and the Upanishads, and it was spread along major trade routes throughout um, Asia. 
Buddhism is the next really, um, important religion in India. It's started by Siddhartha Gautama, who becomes known as Buddha. Their main beliefs is the Four Noble Truths and the Eightfold Path. The Four Noble Truths are the things that they hold to be true um, about uh, the world around them, and the Eightfold Path is the actions that they can take to reach enlightenment. Buddhism ends up spreading throughout India to China and other parts of Asia, including Japan, because of Ahsoka, who started to spread um, Buddhism through his missionaries. Confucianism and Taoism are the two religions um, and kind of philosophies more so in China. Confucianism had harps on this belief that all humans are good, not bad. It emphasizes a respect for elders, which leads them to worship their ancestors, kind of think like Mulan style here. Um, it has a code of politeness and emphasis on education. Confucianism is going to be what those civil service tests are going to be based on. Taoism, also known as Taoism, same thing. And develops in China as well under the founder Lao Zi. They believe in a Tao or this universal force that guides all things. This is also where that yin and yang symbol kind of comes in. Um, they believe that people should be humble, live a simple life. And the biggest kind of most um, belief that they, you'll see most often is this idea of living in harmony with nature. The three main parts of the India that you kind of need to know about as far as empires go is the Indus River Valley, the Mauryan Dynasty, and the Gupta Dynasty. The Indus River Valley, aka the Harappan Civilization in the city of Harappa, formed around the Indus River. They started to build cities with advanced functions like sewers, streets, granaries. They had the written language of Sanskrit that we talked about earlier. They were invaded by the Aryans, and the Aryans are who established the caste system. And if you were high up in the caste system, then you were an Aryan. The Mauryan Empire starts to um, evolve after this. It united India, Pakistan, and Gat Afghanistan under one ruler. Ahsoka was the greatest ruler. He is the one that spreads Buddhism via his missionaries throughout most of Asia. He built roads, hospitals, and veterinary clinics, kind of bringing India to its golden age. The Gupta Dynasty comes after the Mauryan dynasty, and this is where we see lots of those academic achievements, such as the um, development of cotton, math, like the concept of zero, astronomy, and literature. There's four main dynasties in China, the Shang, the Zhao, the Qin, and the Han. The Shang was the very earliest one. This was like during the Neolithic era. It was really hard to live during this time period, um, especially if you were a peasant. They crafted things out of bronze, which is also why it becomes known as the Bronze Age. Um, they had religious traditions that used oracle bones, which is essentially was like a turtle shell that you touched with a really hot iron poker. And then they were able to read and make predictions about the future from those oracle bones. The Zhu brothers overthrow the Shang, though, based on the mandate of heaven, essentially saying that um, unless you have the approval of the gods, then you can't rule. However, you must be just, and they started to rule on Confucian ideologies. Um, China starts to become a very feudal state, and they enter into this warring period where um, different rulers are warring against each other for control. The Qin Dynasty is really short. It uses legalism, which kind of goes along with Confucianism, to rule over China, that rule of law, um, focusing in on what is right and versus what is wrong. Um, they also start to build the Great Wall of China under Shi Hongdi, and he also works to unify China under a standardized system, trying to provide it with some stability. The Han Dynasty's last year, it eases up those legalistic policies, um, begins to expand beyond China's borders, so they really start to trade with other empires. They institute the civil service exam based on Confucianism, so the Confucianism kind of becomes the main belief in China during this time. Persia is another empire that starts to develop kind of closer to Mesopotamia. It wasn't so much in Asia as it was in Mesopotamia. It develops the largest empire in the world at this time. They have a tolerance of conquered people, which is how they're able to take over so much space because people really like them a lot. Um, they also develop an imperial bureaucracy where essentially the emperor was at the top and he assigned power to different uh, satraps, which are kind of like governors who ruled in his name in different parts of the empire. Um, it was kind of this um, top-down approach to government. Zoroastrianism is one of the biggest faiths in Persia. They believe in Ahura Mazda. It is a monotheistic belief. And the Persians also develop an extensive road system um, through the development of the royal road, which connects them with those Asian um, trading partners. 
Go ahead and pause now. Take the very last quiz. It's located in the comments. Thanks for joining me on this video.